a future home-and-home home series on the schedule for the West Virginia Mountaineers football team against a Power 5 non-conference opponent that all Mountaineer fans are looking forward to could be in jeopardy. And no, it's not because West Virginia is going to another conference. So why do I think that? Pull up a chair, sit back, relax, and let me explain. What is up, college sports fans, fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos, and welcome in to another edition of Coos's Corner. So pull up that chair or grab yourself a bar stool and let me serve you up this shot of top shelf college football content. On tap in today's episode, we are talking about a future game on West Virginia's schedule that could be in jeopardy. What game am I talking about? I'm talking about their game against the Alabama Crimson Tide. And it's not about West Virginia. It's not West Virginia's fault at all. It actually has more to do with Alabama. With Texas and Oklahoma leaving the Big 12 for the SEC, the SEC is having to reevaluate how they do their conference games. Number one, they're looking to do away with divisions. And number two, they're looking to potentially go to nine conference games instead of the current eight that they're playing now. And in order to do this, they want to go to three built-in rivalry games for each team, which basically is what you think it means. They will play the same three teams every season. And then the other six games, the other six conference games will rotate between other conference opponents. Well, Nick Saban apparently is not happy with the teams so far that they have Alabama playing on their preliminary schedule. Now, these are not permanent yet. They're still in the discussion phases. But if it happens the way they have it drawn out right now, Nick Saban will probably cry about it. And because of that, they could think their schedule's too hard, could end up taking some future Power 5 non-conference opponents off their schedule in order to make their schedule slightly easier. And there's an article in Sports Illustrated that explains this. And I'll share that article with you. So here's the article. It says, this is from Sports Illustrated. It says, Nick Saban, not a fan of three schools the SEC might make Alabama play under new format. So I'm not going to read the whole article, but it starts off just talking about how the SEC is looking to change their format. The program will have two power five non-SEC opponents on the schedule that's talking about Alabama uh, because Nick Saban has wanted to beef up their their non-con schedule. Well, in doing that, they're also having to now talking about playing an extra conference game, which Nick Saban has been in favor of, but he wants it to be equitable. It says, amid the SEC's internal debate over a future scheduling format, Saban wants more balance and equity than what has been proposed by the league administrators in a nine-game model. And here's a quote from Saban. I've always been an advocate for playing more game, more conference games, but if you play more games, I think you have to get the three fixed opponents right. They're giving us Tennessee, Auburn, and LSU. I don't know how they come to that decision, unquote. Now, first of all, Nick, you already play Auburn and LSU every year anyway because they're in your division. So they're adding Tennessee on. Now, I understand why you would be aggravated. Tennessee just beat you last year. But, Nick, let's face it, man. If you want to be in the SEC, in the toughest conference in the country, then you've got to play the competition. You can't have it both ways, Nick. So either either get out of the SEC or stop stop crying. You want to, play, you want to be in the best conference? and play the best teams, then play the best teams. All right, let's keep going. It says, for a year now, SEC officials have been discussing a divisionless eight- or nine-game conference scheduling format with Texas and Oklahoma moving to the SEC from the Big 12 in 2024. In the eight-game format, teams will play one permanent opponent and seven rotating teams. In the nine-game format, teams will play three permanent opponents and six rotating. In an eight-game format, choosing one permanent opponent for each team is somewhat non-controversial with most having a single primary rivalry. But choosing three permanent opponents can be tricky for a hotly competitive league with some of the country's biggest brands and most visceral fan bases. And that's a great point. When you've got this many good teams in a conference, there's no way to make it completely fair. Everybody can't play Vanderbilt, folks. Let's keep going. The SEC was expected to choose a team's three permanent opponents based on primary and secondary rivalries, geographical footprints, and most importantly, balance and parity. The conference is using a 10-year success metric to strike the fairest blend of permanent opponents for each team, Saban says. And here's another quote from Saban. They said they did a 10-year whatever. Well, some of those years, Tennessee wasn't as good as they've been in the previous 10 years. But now they're as good as they used to be before those 10 years. We got three teams, and two of them are in the top 10, and the other is in the top 10 a lot, Saban adds. Look historically over a 25-year history, and the three best teams in the East are Georgia, Tennessee, and Florida. You look historically at 25 years, Alabama, LSU, and Auburn are the three best teams in the West. So we're playing them all. The SEC's exact 10-year metric is unclear, 
But using league records from 2013 to 22, the top finishers, the top half finishers in winning percentage are Alabama, Georgia, Oklahoma, LSU, Florida, Texas, Auburn, and Texas A&M. The bottom half is Missouri, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Tennessee, and South Carolina, Kentucky, Arkansas, and Vanderbilt. Big 12 records were used for Oklahoma and Texas. Presumably, those in the top half of the conference over the past decade will play two other teams in the top half and one in the bottom half. Those in the bottom half will play two in the bottom and one in the top half. So they're trying to make it equitable. I get it, but it's hard to do. It's hard, it's hard to make it equitable and make everybody happy here. To Saban's point, the Volunteers are on their way up under coach Josh Heupel. Tennessee just completed its best season since 2001, finishing 11-2 with a 52-49 win against Alabama in Knoxville. Though they have struggled over the past decade, the Vols are historically one of the SEC's elite programs, having won the third most league football championships. Alabama's proposed other two permanent opponents, LSU and Auburn, have won the fourth most and sixth most SEC titles, 12-8. and eight. And here's another quote from Saban. They only, they only did it over 10 years. Now you've got name, image, and likeness, which changes that whole dynamic because it's who has the most money to pay players until they change the rules. I like playing more SEC games. I think it's good for the game and good for the fans. I think they have a better chance to get the parity right during the eight games. I'm talking about the balance of who has who. Teams also don't get a fourth conference game that, for many, is a victory over an FCS or group of five team. The format also means that games already scheduled years from now might need changing. Listen to that again. The format also means that games already scheduled years from now might need changing. That's where the West Virginia game could come into play, and that's what I was focusing on for this video. West Virginia is set to play Alabama in a home-and-home, like I said earlier, beginning in 2026. The Tide are scheduled to come to Morgantown in 2026, and West Virginia is set to make a trip to Tuscaloosa in 2027. If that game would get canceled, it would be difficult for the Mountaineers to get another Power 5 team on their schedule because most of these schedules are set years in advance. And more than likely, they would have to replace them with another FCS opponent or another group of five opponent. And when you look at West Virginia's schedule in those years, when you look at 2026, right now they have Alabama, obviously, then they have UT Martin and East Carolina on the schedule. Then when you look at 2027, they are at Alabama, and then they have VMI and Ohio. So both of those years, they have a FCS and a group of five opponent. If you have to take out your only Power 5 non-conference game and replace it with an FCS or another group of five game, it's really going to hurt your strength of schedule. And putting a second FCS team on there may, make, may put you out of bowl eligibility. So you know that's not an option. So what would West Virginia do in that case? It would be anxious to see. I hope it doesn't come to that, but it would be anxious to see how they handle it if that's the case. So I want to hear in the comment section, Coos's Corner family, what do you think about this situation? Do you think the West Virginia game against Alabama is at risk of being canceled over this SEC scheduling model? And what do you think about Nick Saban's complaints? Do you think they're justified, or do you think he's crying over spilt milk here and just needs to shut up and move on and quit, quit whining? And I'll be honest with you. I'm getting a little tired of Nick Saban whining about NIL. Okay, His guys are making a lot of money too, so he needs to just adjust to today's game like everybody else is trying to do. We all have, you know, there's issues out there with it, okay? We get it, but crying about it and constantly complaining in the media is not going to get it fixed. So anyway, I want to hear your thoughts on Saban's comments, and I want to hear your thoughts on West Virginia's future schedule. What do you think ends up happening here? Also, guys, please, if you can, please support my channel here financially. You can check out my merch store. There's a link at the top of the description box, or you can hit one of the photos below. You can uh, drop a one-time donation by hitting the heart thanks option. It's a heart with a dollar sign in it right below right below here. Uh, you can also join my channel, become a channel member, take advantage of the perks that has to offer. You can support me absolutely free in four ways. You can like this video by hitting the thumbs up button. You can share it out with your college sports loving friends. If they're a Big 12 fan and especially a West Virginia fan or if they like hearing about conference alignment, then they need, need a subscriber here at Coos's Corner. Uh, please drop that comment. And last but not least, please subscribe to the channel here. Help me get to my goal of 5,000 subscribers. I mentioned closer and closer to it, but I, I need your help to get there. So please subscribe. Also, I want to uh, give a shout out to another partner with me here on the channel, and that is Blue Ridge Coffee Crafters. I'll leave a link to Blue Ridge Coffee Crafters in the description description box. Go online, order you some great coffee from Blue Ridge Coffee Crafters. Uh, and if you type Coos's or Coos's Corner in the comment section of the Blue Ridge, of your order, I will get a small commission from the sale. Thanks to Blue Ridge Coffee Crafters for agreeing to partner with me here at Coos's Corner. With that being said, I really appreciate your support. 
I appreciate you tuning into this episode. And until the next one, Q Country Roads. Take me home.